Hi everyone, my name is Bradley Justice and I'm with the Swell Doll Shop. I'm very excited to be sharing a very special part of my collection here today. As many of you know, I've been a Barbie collector since I was about 11 years old. And one of my favorite members of the Barbie family is Francie, Barbie's cousin. Francie was created in 1966 after a sort of um, seven year history with the Barbie line. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how that creation came to be, but first, Barbie had been a very successful fashion doll for Mattel. It had kind of set the bar for all the other companies and um, Mattel had discovered that every time you created a doll, you created a wardrobe. So it was sort of the razor, razor blade kind of thing. You designed something and there needed to be more things purchased to go along with it. So when they introduced Ken, everyone need, needed Ken's wardrobe and then they needed um, Skipper and they needed Skipper's wardrobe. So they discovered that with building on the family, it continued to create more success because they needed to buy more outfits and accessories to go along with it. So they decided to continue with that plan with Francie. Prior to Francie being created, there were a couple things that had happened. One was the 1964 British invasion. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll let you know about it. In 1964, the Beatles appeared on the Ed Sullivan TV show and everybody went crazy for the Beatles and everything British. And along with that came fashion. So little girls started ironing their hair and shortening their mini skirt, shortening their skirts to mini skirts, and it just became a whole new look. But there was a divide between um, a teenager of 15, 16 that was Beatles crazy and a teenager that was 18, 19 that was already working in the world. At age 18, most girls graduating from high school were getting married and having careers, um, albeit maybe a nurse or a secretary. It was just a different time then. So there was a TV show that came on in 1965 called Gidget. It starred Sally Field and Sally Field pretty much represented that new style teenager. Going to dance parties, going to the soda fountain, hanging out with her friends, surfing, doing everything that Gidget did. And it was just a different world for that era of teenager. So Mattel, seeing that maybe Barbie needed an update, decided to test out that sort of mindset with a new doll, and that doll was gonna be Francie. The first thing that you'll notice about Francie is she's a little bit different than Barbie. This is Francie, and this is a Barbie-sized body. So they're a little less busty, not as curvy, and she's a quarter inch shorter than Barbie. That first year that Francie came out in 1966, she came in two models. She came with bendable legs and rooted eyelashes. The rooted eyelashes were a method that had been created by Charlotte Johnson, Barbie's first fashion designer. She held the patent for the method for rooting those lashes and it would be a staple with the mod dolls throughout the rest of the 60s. There was also a straight leg version available that was a little more stripped down, stripped down. Her legs didn't bend and she didn't have the rooted eyelashes. Both models were available in blonde and brunette. Um, there were also 12 outfits that were available that first year, not including a Sears gift set, and those were illustrated in the booklet that came with the doll. These original outfits were all created by Mattel designer Eileen Zublin. Eileen had been hired by Mattel to create not only for other dolls, but she um, created some of the popular outfits for Barbie, like the senior prom outfit. She would go on to be one of the most fabulous Barbie designers, creating Poodle Parade and other outfits for Francie. She was given the, the lead role in the Francie line because she loved popular culture and she loved um, hip new music. So I'm sure she was a Beatles fan. So I think she was the perfect person for the job. That first wardrobe was done with exclusively new fabrics and accessories. None of the fabrics that were used for that first year really existed in the Barbie line before. That may sound kind of unusual to say, but prior to that, um, anytime that Barbie got a red velvet coat, so did Skipper. And then that red velvet would also be used for Ken outfit, um, King, um, Arabian Nights from the little theater costumes, and it also be used for Chatty Cathy. So when one doll got red velvet, everybody got red velvet. So it was kind of a banner year just to create a whole fresh new look for this doll. 
I'm not 100% sure who sculpted the head. I think it may be Joyce Clark. She sculpted the 1967 Twist and Turn doll, but um, I'm not 100% sure. So that year Francie was a success, pretty much um, outperforming Barbie. And then the next year, Barbie did get her update. She got rooted lashes, a new face, long straight hair, and a twist and turn waist that was created by Jack Ryan, who was an engineer at Mattel. So Francie also got an update. She got the twist and turn waist, still with the bendable legs. She says she just pivots on her axis. And then this is an unusual doll. This is Black Francie. She was available in 1967, and she is the first African-American doll in the Barbie line. She had an exclusive swimsuit and um, the same hairstyle. There are two variations of the doll, this one that stays brunette, and then one that the hair oxidizes to sort of a red color. Um, collectors are crazy about either one of them. They're both pretty rare. This is kind of a prize in my collection. This is also the 1967 Caucasian version of Francie. Once again, available in blonde and brunette, but with that knit and nylon swimsuit. Francie was also available for the Japanese market, and she was available there with some outfits that we're not seeing here, and she also looks a little different. This is a Francie wearing a Japanese exclusive that was available only for the Japanese market. Her face painting, especially her eye painting, is a little bit different. That doll came with this booklet that illustrates some of the wonderful outfits that were available for the doll. Um, many are just like their United States counterparts, but then some were only available in Japan. Collectors love the Japanese exclusive outfits. They even did a kimono for Francie. The early dolls that came with the rooted eyelashes also came with this little eyelash brush. This is a great illustration of it. It was a tiny little addition that just kind of added a little bit of play value to your doll. Each year that Francie was available, she got wonderful new outfits that were designed not only by Eileen, but other designers as well. This is a Sears exclusive outfit called Prom Pinks. It was a satin and brocade dress that came with this wonderful satin coat and the gold belt. There was no attention to detail was spared, including like this little headband with a gold hair bow. These three dolls are kind of favorites in my collection. Carol Spencer, who was principal designer for the Mattel Barbie doll for 35 years, designed these three outfits. This is actually my childhood Francie. She's wearing an outfit called Wild Bunch that I added to her wardrobe. Um, and Carol designed this on a return home trip to Minnesota, and it was bitterly cold, and she wondered what a stylish girl would wear to stay warm in that type of weather. So she imagined this fabulous faux fur coat, a mini dress, and then the orange tights along with the boots. We always think of the 60s with all the crazy prints and patterns and bright colors. This wonderful outfit here is a wonderful paisley print that reminds me of Pucci. It's really cool and comes with this little head scarf. This outfit was called Snake Charmers and it's sort of a python print um, vinyl fabric that's trimmed with this yellow faux fur. It has a matching mini dress underneath it. So 1969, Francie gets a little bit of an update with a new hairstyle. It's a short flip hairstyle that's available in blonde and brunette. This variation of the doll is wearing an outfit called Zig Zag Zoom. Soon thereafter, there was a doll created for the European market that collectors refer to as the German Francie. This is that doll. And it's an unusual doll. The head sculpt is different. She has a slightly different face, bigger head. She's on a straight leg body, but has a twist and turn waist. This is her original dress and she came with a little blue hair bow. She's very popular with collectors and collectors refer to, as I said, as German Francie, but I've seen her in Dutch catalogs and some of the other booklets um, in other countries, so I think she was pretty much a European exclusive. Also from that same year, Francie got an update. 
This is Malibu Francie, and Malibu Francie is um, using the Casey head mold. Now, I haven't mentioned Casey, but Francie got a friend in 1967 named Casey. So it was sort of the Gidget LaRue thing, like from the TV show, Best Friends. Here's an outfit that shows the Francie and Casey packaging. This is kind of a fun outfit called Pazam. And this shows the innovation that was going on in fashion and also in Barbie fashion. It's the use of a clear vinyl raincoat over this little jumpsuit. And it also came with a nylon bikini and that pink fall. That was a time that everyone was wearing crazy wigs and hair pieces, falls and wiglets. So, you know, it was pretty appropriate that Francie would get one for herself. In 1973, Quick Curl Barbie was introduced. And along with Quick Curl Barbie came this variation of Francie. This is called Quick Curl Francie. She originally came in a long yellow dress. Um, tiny wire filaments were rooted at the same time as her um, hair. And it allowed the child to use a magic curling wand to add curls to her hair. Um, she's wearing a really cute outfit called Suited for Shorts. It's sort of an orange... Um, suede jacket over this cute little knit outfit um, with little hot pants. Um, and you can just kind of see the evolution of fashion. So in 1972, we got Busy Francie. Now this doll originally was on a body that had hands that allowed the thumb to move so she can grasp things and accessories that she came with like a TV show or a drink cup or um, a little travel case. She has sort of a shag hairstyle that's very Carol Brady in my mind. But um, the bodies on those dolls from that period are very fragile. And so quite often the arms and legs break off. So sometimes you just have to get a little innovative like I did and put it on a different body so you can still enjoy the doll. Now that's from 72. I did skip this wonderful 1971 No Bangs Francie. We refer to her as No Bangs because she doesn't have rooted bangs. She was a twist and turn doll, and she was available in blonde and brunette. This one's actually not in the best of condition, but she's a very rare doll and doesn't turn up very often. So if you have one, consider yourself lucky. Now, this is the final sort of incarnation of Francie from 1975. Malibu, Bar Malibu Francie was still available, but this is what we refer to as baggy Francie. She's wearing an outfit called Checker Chums. They did Francie and Casey that year. Casey was blonde, Francie was brunette, and they came sold in these sort of unusual, just very simple bags. That's why we call them baggy Francie. Um, this was at a time that Mattel was kind of struggling. They were trying to stay on top of things. Um, there was a recession, there was a lot of financial woes, and so I think they were looking to also compete with other um, toy companies that were directly competing with them and, and sort of outperforming them because they were cheaper. So I think they were looking for ways to economize and um, this is very simple packaging. It could have been sold in a grocery store or a dime store with this little header card to go right on some pegboard. So it's kind of a fun thing. This is from 75, which is the last year of Francie. So this is the last sort of new Francie that was produced. Throughout her sort of long, illustrious career of nine years, Francie had some interesting real estate, including these vinyl cases. Um, this is the housemate, and they did these for um, Barbie and for um, Tootie and Chris, and they all kind of snapped together. And perhaps the most um, easy to find Francie case is the hexagonal Francie case with these wonderful illustrations around it. Um, you find them with um, pink tops and blue tops. This is the blue. And there's also a variation that's entirely white. Then there was the studio case. This opened up with fold-down beds. So it was a studio house for Francie and Casey. And then this is a Barbie and Francie dressing room case, which is really kind of great. It's got wonderful illustrations of Barbie and Francie all around it. Francie is a really fun doll. You have about 180 outfits that were produced for her over the years. There's a lot of variation. Um, 
as time continued, you started to see um, other fabrics from other dolls getting used. These are some Best Buys from like 1973. Ken and Barbie, and I even think Skipper got outfits made out of this same fabric. So there's always a little mystery in everything. Um, so this is an outfit called Dreamy Duo that's a little shorty nightgown and robe in yellow. And if you look at the package, it says it's for Francie and Becky. Now, when this was produced, collectors of the time, keep in mind 1971, wrote to Mattel and asked, who is Becky and where can we buy her? And they received letters saying that they had at one time intended to make a Becky, but then had decided not to. Um, in the booklet for that year, there are dolls that appear that are very different. Um, it looks like Casey's head mold with a long flip hairstyle um, a rose-colored headband and blue eyeshadow. So we pretty much assumed that that was Becky. So collectors got to where they would say when something was shown and then never came to the market that it went to live in Becky land. So um, for the 2009 can, um, year of Barbie, the 50th anniversary, Mattel was very kind and made all of us Francie lovers a Becky doll. They did a special gift set. So I'm, I'm very fond of that they finally did Becky. So, 180 outfits, lots of cases. There's some Susie Goose furniture. Um, there's a variety of dolls and styles, and there's so much to collect with Francie. It's one of my favorites, and I think you can probably see why. Um, I invite you to explore and, and learn more about Francie. There's some great resources. Um, and I look forward to seeing you around at doll shows and seeing you um, at virtual doll conventions. So thank you for joining me and learning about Francie.